Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome. Yes, I thought I'd do a bit of a podcast on what I've been up to, life after the flood, a happy mail, Christmas, just generally a bit of everything that's happened to us since the flood went through our suburb. So let's get started. I won't focus on the flood too much. I think um, it tends to drag me down and make me feel quite anxious. Currently, we have 130 houses in our area that are um, relying on our electricity provider to use a generator to provide power. We happen to be one of those, which means that we have to be very conservative about the electrical power we use in case we crash the generator and while well, without power. Christmas Day we had power and we managed to get through it and have some fun. I, the roads were clear so I could get out and get some food because a lot of food that I had stored in the freezer spoiled. About $400 worth of meat was spoiled and couldn't be used. I managed to get a reasonable sized chicken and a piece of beef and we cooked those in the Weber Q. I did some seasoning on the outside of the chicken and some Tex-Mex type barbecue seasoning on the beef and we had that with roast veg for Christmas dinner. It was a lot of fun, very different for us, not very traditional but we may do. And I made a cheesecake. I used my um, dragon fruit jam that I had made that had a Turkish delight feel about it because I'd used rose water and I swirled that through a cheesecake, a non-baked cheesecake and we had that for dessert. So we still open presents, some presents got through, some are still waiting to arrive into our, our city. Anyway, we have limited power because we have an underground cable that is severely damaged and until yesterday very little internet or phone, same thing. But the internet got a little bit better about, oh, I don't know, yesterday afternoon, so I'm doing a video. Everything won't probably be fixed until well and truly into the new year because of the damage. 12 houses were completely destroyed in our suburb. So considering we weren't one of those, we are better off than most. And the airport's been extremely busy, so there may be a few planes going overhead. Anyway. Happy Mail. Prior to the flood and during the approach of Cyclone Jasper, I did receive some Happy Mail that I didn't get to share with you and I have opened it but I'm going to share it with you because I want to thank these people for sending me Happy Mail. First of all, I did do the markets early December. It wasn't as busy as the last market. I probably did about half the amount of sales. I can't remember if I updated you on this. And that's because we were expecting Cyclone Jasper and a lot of people were staying home and preparing for that. Even though it was a Category 2, it wasn't the cyclone that did the damage. It was the massive amount of rain that caused flooding. Anyway, it was still a good market and I enjoyed it and my friend Ulia joined me and she gave me a Christmas present. I'll just pause the video and get that for you. So she gave me this amazing bag with some goodies in it and I am using this currently for my Advent knitting project. It has been a godsend. I really love it. It's a great bag. It has compartments on the outside and it's ideal for bigger projects and it's like shower proof so with the dampness around it's been keeping my project really dry and um, not even allowing it to get damp at all so I thank her for that inside was so much stuff there's this little and I'm not quite sure what it's made of it's like a, a recycled shower proof paper and it's like a, a knitting bag where you hold over your arm and keep your yarn in there. And it is full of goodies. Another yarn bag. Um, container for stitch markers. Lots of stitch markers. Needles. And, of course, a stress ball, which I haven't used yet. But, yeah, there was just so many good things in this bag for a crafter like me. And being a fellow crocheter she knew I will 
that I would appreciate them and put them to good use. Sorry about the crackling. So that was my Christmas gift at the markets from Ulia where we exchanged gifts. The happy mail I received, first one off the ranks, was from Jules in Queensland. And I haven't I have opened the card and had a look. I put it back in so I wouldn't forget. And um, Jules is a loyal subscriber, has been absolutely awesome. Such a beautiful photo and picture on the card, snowmen in the night sky. Thank you for your kindness and generosity throughout the year. You inspire me to be a better knitter with, a, with crochet. Have a great Christmas and New Year. It's really nice to know that I actually do inspire people to crochet and knit and improve their skills. So Jules, I really appreciate your kind words. It makes me feel so much better. In this little bag, which was posted to me, is some yarn I have never used. I'll take the ribbon off the top. I'll keep that. That beautiful tartan Christmas ribbon. It is Motivira Reflections, 100% acrylic. There are 230 meters in the ball, and I'd say it's an eight ply or three weight. It doesn't say on there. And the paper is from Recycled Sources, which is a new thing that's starting to appear. It's made in China. There are two balls of that, and it reminds me a bit of um, being like landscapes line brands landscapes but they're great colors there's no color name that i can see just made for spotlight but yeah that's beautiful i really like that and i love the colors and that was her little happy mail gift to me along with these snowflakes type buttons which will come in really handy the tea towels so thank you Jules I really appreciate that now I'm going to be moving around a bit and it's going to get a bit noisy because there's more happy mail I got a lovely card and a little gift inside from Suzanne in WA um, my original home state which was great uh, wishing you a happy Christmas hopefully they're with time to cr crochet and knit I did have a little time. Isn't it gorgeous? I think she made that card. It's handmade with, of course, a polar bear for me. It's lovely, isn't it? Inside that was um, a soak. Modern care for the laundry you have. Soak. Yuzu, which I'm pretty sure is Japanese lead lemon, and attached is this lovely stitch marker, which I'm trying to work out if that's lemon. Oh, it's a cupcake. Lovely little, I'll take it off the black there. Can you see a little cupcake? Ta -da! That's really cute. I don't have a cupcake stitch marker. So that's something else. I also received a great card. Clewiston, Florida from my friend Barbara. I love getting her cards when she's traveling. Um, we, we had a bit of a laugh. It arrived before the flood. We're not laughing so much now. She went to Lake Placid and visited a sugarcane farm and had a look around the fields and groves and had a great weekend. So we have a Lake Placid here, which is further over that way and very close to the Barren. Uh, most of the houses along Lake Placid have gone. They're just completely flooded. And sugarcane growing over the back here. Unfortunately, I think it's about a $18 million crop that's been completely destroyed. But yes, at the time we like, we were smiling um, thing and I because yes we have a Lake Placid and we have sugar cane over the back but yeah well we did it's a bit of a wreck at the moment but there you go a lovely card I love getting the cards and seeing where people have visited being a bit of a travel bug myself now I also 
during this traumatic time decided while the cyclone was coming I would sit and catch up on some whips and I finished and I'm trying to see if I've got the pattern here I don't know if I've got a picture of the pattern I thought I had anyway not to worry I was gifted a lovely pattern by Karen from South Australia a really loyal subscriber and a subscriber to many channels I'm a talented crocheter and she gifted me the ZZ blanket or and Ziggy blanket pattern. There are two you can make. You can make the ZZ or ZZ, whatever you want to, how you want to pronounce it, or the Ziggy blanket. The ZZ is the smaller size, the Ziggy is the bigger. And I decided I had started the ZZ, the lapgan size, and I decided during all this build up and waiting around for the cyclone, I would finish that before Christmas, which I did. Ta -da! And here it is. This is my ZZ blanket. It's corner to corner with the colors in it. I'll try and put pictures at the end of this. I really love it. Ribs was really impressed. Um, I may make the Ziggy, the bigger one, with lots more colors because I enjoyed it so much and it turned out so well. It's a pattern by Zine and Rogers. It is a paid for pattern and all the links to the patterns I talk about and channels will be in the description below for you to check it out. But it was a lovely gift and I really enjoyed making it. Now, the yarn I use, the grey, for those who've been with me for a while will, may remember, I visited a charity shop up on the Tablelands and they, I go there quite often and they had this mountains of yarn. Some of it I wasn't interested in, but they had this grey in a bag, all new walls. Now it was from Wangaratta Woolen Mills and there were nine walls and those are bags of ten. And so one had been used, but there were nine balls of new yarn and it's about six dollars a ball. And I probably picked up the bag for less than ten dollars, the ladies were just happy for me to have it because I knew I would make something for charity. The pink and blue were already in my stash and the same brand. So it is um, da -dun, da -dun, Panda Magnum Soft. So it's beautiful and soft. It's so easy to work with. And it's an eight ply, three weight, and there's no real color number. But there you have it. That was the ball band. And that is the ZZ Blanket. I love it. I think it turned out really well. I still have quite a bit of grey, some pink and blue left. So I might do another charity blanket or lap gown with um, a different pattern. But thank you, Karen. I really enjoyed making that. It was a lot of fun. And I certainly think following the Zine and Rogers corner to corner pattern improved my skills. So thank you very much. Now, I've just got to check my notes because there's going to be quite a bit. So you might want to pause the video, get yourself coffee, cup of tea, water, whatever you drink. Um, so it was over. It was after the markets and before Christmas, I received a present from Karen Wright for the markets to sell for um, Emma's Quest. A lot of items she made but they didn't make it in time for this market and she was a little disappointed but mail from Adelaide like you can get something in four days or something can take two weeks I got this lovely card from her with some great personal messages I really love getting the cards and hearing the messages I thought I'd share with you her um, what she made for the markets for me and I'll just take a couple out I'm trying to find that because I was just blown away I think they're amazingly cute I'm trying to get the different ones I have to dig deep here we go so first of all she made these mini yip yips with the googly eyes there's quite a few of those and I'm going to get some key rings because I've run out and maybe put some on key rings as bag buddies but there is absolutely heaps of those 
And the other thing she had, and I'm going to put them on my finger, she made is these octopus with googly eyes. Now, I'm not sure if this isn't a, um, a tutorial by Terry at Yarn Joy. I've got to check it out. But as I said, I've had very limited internet. And there are lots of these. And Reeve said they're so cute. I've even thought of bagging some up and putting them around the suburbs for kids to find as random act of kindness, especially the little octo ones, as we live near a beachside suburb. I may do that and just make a donation to Emma's Quest to cover the cost. She also did some spa sets. I'll get this one out. She had two spa sets. Now they have like a, a face washer. Oops, drop one. Face washer with some four makeup wipes and a soap sack. And generally in the past when she sent me these, I find soap to go in the soap sack and I do gift packs up for Mother's Day. And that was one. There was also Mug Cozy with it. This one that she made in the, or Cup Cozy to go in the same cotton. It's beautiful and soft. Now she made two. She made that colour and she made a pink one. And someone I know wanted the pink spa set but not the cup cozy. So I've already actually sold one to someone for a donation to Emma's Quest. That's the pink that it was. I, I did it up as a gift set. She wanted it for a little gift for someone. I found some beautiful rose pink soap, put it with it and um, gift wrapped it all up in a cellophane bag. And I put one of Karen's Etsy Bitsons cards in there with it to show, because I did say I didn't make them, um, this lady did. So yeah, she sent me some business cards. So when I bagged this gift packs up for the spa sets or the cup cozy, I put her Etsy shop business card because she has building bless blessings on Etsy. So make sure you check out her shop. She has donated this bag full of yip yips and octopus and two spa sets and posted it to me. And don't be disappointed, Karen, because I did get a couple of emails through and I got one from our um, market provider that I've joined this year and I'm going to do next year. They're not only going to do November, December markets again, they're going to do one in April a Mother's Day market and I am going to sell these at the April market. I'm going to do the three for the year. So that's at least one market on the horizon I can sell them at. So I do appreciate you sending them all the donation and hard work and posting them to us. Now I did post some gifts out prior to the storm and flooding and the tropical depression. I know one made it. I've been advised to one definitely didn't make it um, destroyed and um, one has just gone missing I did do a online gift on Christmas Eve when I found out the present I'd sent someone they're both in Australia um, hadn't made it they've been destroyed it wasn't worth claiming on insurance um, it wasn't that much but it was just a little gift for someone so I yet may send more gifts out in the new year to different people once. Well, I thought our roads south would be cut and we would get limited in. We are getting some food trucks through and yesterday I got some mail through. I had ordered some yarn from Bendigo Woolen Mills during the cyclone and it arrived yesterday. It's not worth showing you. It is a thing for 2024. It was one of my goals. I bought some yarn. Um, Hanks that I'm going to experiment with dyeing. Yes, I'm going to have a go at dyeing again, but I'm actually not going to over dye yarn this time. I'm actually going to dye some yarn. Um, I don't think it'll be commercially for sale. If it turns out really well, I may gift it to someone who won't mind or I, and use some of it myself because I did buy quite a bit. It was reasonably priced and I was probably bored thinking, oh, I could do that. I haven't died in ages. So that's one of the plans for 2024. And mail is getting through slowly. The other thing I got, which is sort of happy mail, because I had a 
notice in my post box at the office and the lady there that I often give yarn to who started to crochet a couple of years ago and I've encouraged and she won some um, sections of the show or the craft, big craft fair we have here and she's really pleased. She put the notice in my mailbox I would go inside and she gifted me this Schwepsky's Wool yarn. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful colour, that one. Now this one, I really like this yarn. It is Blueberry Bam Bam colour. Um, colour 755. Isn't that gorgeous? And that was a gift from her to thank me for all the encouragement and yarns I've helped her along the way with. And that really was touching. And um, yes, that was just prior to going through the flood. I actually have found a pattern for this and I'll explain what my plans are for 2024 because I've had lots of time, we've done cleaning up, but it's been extremely hot. And um, so I've been sitting around. I was feeling sorry for myself, but I decided I would make some plans and changes in 2024. The other thing I've done while I've been sitting around was I had to finish off my luck of the draw early because it had reached the size I require for crochet for cancer. And here it is. Ta-da! I finished it off my luck of the draw number eight blanket i'll take a photo of this i did an enclosed border to do put all the ends in i loved it this is the v stitch tutorial by ophelia talks and um, i used up quite a bit of the cocoon yarn i then and i can't remember the name of the channel where i found it when i did have internet and it was fairly straightforward I made a matching beanie so it's a set for them to donate with the leftover colours, a V-stitch beanie. But like I said, I'll put a link to all the in the description below. It's when you do such variegated or panels, it's always good to give it a matching beanie or a plain beanie. And I thought, well, it wasn't that hard I would match up the beanie as best I could with the little bits left over from the colours I used. And I really do enjoy luck of the draw, so I hope it continues in 2024. I also, when I went to Crochet for Cancer, were given a little Christmas gift, and I haven't unpacked it, I'll save it for next year, was this handmade Christmas tree ornament. Um, it was made by the lady who for years has been organising gift packs for angel babies. They are little gift layettes and blankets for stillborn babies for their um, last day on this earth they are wrapped in and, and yes she made us all these little christmas trees it was a christmas tree and something else that you could pick one or the other and i picked the tree because i thought they were just lovely it's made with some sort of wool and wound round and I will put that away for next year and use it as a decoration I still have some decorations out it's only the 28th of December so we've got to enjoy as much of Christmas as we can to keep our spirits up so I have worked on another charity blanket I don't have much focus on um, concentration I guess on difficult patterns I have progressed quite the way. I'll just pause the video, it won't be a moment. So my advent project, I have done a lot of knitting on that. It was fairly easy, it doesn't require a lot of concentration, even though it's a Stephen West pattern. And I've had to frog a row where I've just lost concentration and done the wrong thing. I think it was that, the polar bear I last showed you, and I've done all this. I have opened all my advents and I am about two days behind. The idea being, whichever comes first, the large size stitch count or the finish of my advent yarns for this year, and then I'll start decreasing the other side because I do have a lot of colors. It's so heavy and I forgot to put the um, needle stoppers on it so I don't want to lose the stitches, but there you go. I'll try and take a photo of the progress and I'll put it in my Ravelry 
page project page but it's looking awesome I've used some transition yarns to make it blend in but um, I've really enjoyed this and it's all his bag new project bag is ideal for the size of it and thing did all the ball winding for me which brings me to I've decided to because I can't concentrate and I've been quite anxious about things um, because this for us was a different event that we've ever been through and quite um, I don't know quite a shock to the system I guess you'd say um, I've been doing different things when I can't sit and craft I decided I'd minimalize I'd get rid of some things because during the flood you realize how much you have we have lost about 80% of the stuff in the shed that flooded so that'll be an expensive exercise replacing some of those tools fortunately not the gurney so we've been able to clean up the mud and stuff around the house outside but I've been sort of I had two drawers of yarn where I've used a bit and I've done that I've just wrapped it up and put it away and Reeb's been wanting to keep busy a bit He's been at night um, because to save on power being on a generator rather than all being in different rooms and air conditioning them, we're sitting in one room together um, either watching TV or just talking or reading or whatever and Reed set up the ball winder and he's done one draw for me. All my balls that are looking like that, he's been winding them up. He puts a elastic band around them the idea being is there are two drawers and I plan to condense it to one. I'm going to work out, they're all I think three weight or eight ply. And if they're 100% acrylic, I'm going to do some color ranges so that I can donate them to crochet for cancer or somewhere like that and someone can make a lap gan. I reduce my yarn stock that way. Empty the drawer ready for my future 2024 projects so 2024 is something else I've planned and um, I don't I think I'll continue on I know it's quite long but um, you should enjoy it I'll just pause the video it won't be a moment so I've moved over a bit so for 2024 I've decided I am going to as they say march to the beat of my own drum I'm just going to do things I really want to do or enjoy. I say that every year and then I get sidetracked doing other things. I enjoy making things for charity and I enjoy making um, things that are unusual or different or challenge my skills. But one of the things I discovered in my cleanup and I felt very touched about was I'd been given a lot of yarn from subscribers a lot of patterns as gifts and I just feel in 2024 I need to show my appreciation for that and make some of these up so as you can see my rack here these weren't just stacked there to get them out of the flood water they were actually organized for 2024 so in each project bag is either a pattern I was gifted and the yarn I've decided to use to make that pattern or there's yarn that I was gifted and I have um, decided what pattern I will make and some just have the yarn I was gifted and I can't decide on what pattern to do and I may ask you so that is just some of the yarn and patterns I've been gifted over the years that I haven't used or made so in 2024, I will be doing the hashtag gift of love or gift of kindness, whichever you want to call it. And I am going to have hashtag make for in 2024. The reason being a lot of the patterns I've been gifted will test my skills. There's one in there that I know will take me all year. I still have whips from this year that I haven't finished that are testing my skills. So I'm going to make make four in 2024. Now I may set this up as a chat or finished object thread on Ravelry and in the Facebook group where you can join me and make four 
patterns that you've either been gifted or challenge your skills or use gifted yarn and make four unique items to you. It could be a lap gown, you've never made one before, or a unique pattern or unique yarn. And um, we'll share our projects along the way. At the end of the year, if you've participated, I may do a mystery prize giveaway to those who participate and join me. Let's call it gift of kindness, hashtag, and make for in 2024. So that's my plan. And how I will do it is all of these will be numbered on a wheel. And the first one I spin up on the 1st of January will be the one I start with. Whether it's a gifted pattern and I found the yarn or whether it's gifted yarn and I have a pattern or whether it's gifted yarn and I need your help to come up with a pattern to use it. I just want to show my appreciation for all these lovely people who send me happy mail and gifts. And yes, this one definitely will be joining the pile because I have found a pattern I would like to make. And this one will take me all year. It will challenge my skills because most of the pattern is on a, um, a like on a, a grid. It's not instructions. It's just how you follow the graph and how you do it. And um, I really want to try and improve those reading skills of that sort of pattern. So that's one of my plans for 2024. And so for those who are new to the channel, don't forget, I'll be doing the make along. All my own subscribers, I've had some messages waiting for beta breath. Of course, Shutterbug AU, our make along for 2024 that will start on the 1st of January. I will be making the free pattern from Hobie Shutterbug and I will start with the first picture on 2024, in January, on January the 1st for 2024. Now remember, I'll be posting a picture with a palette and use two colors from the palette. I'll just move around a bit and doesn't matter how many rows or what project, just use at least two colors from the palette of the photo I show you and there'll be two photos a month. Now I'll put a link to the um, launch video so you can check out all the rules and feel free to send me a photo that I can put through Crochet Studio come up with a palette and give me permission to use it. But I have picked the photo and I probably will pre-record the video because of the internet um, dropping out on us and try and schedule it and make sure it goes up on the 1st of January, Eastern Standard Time, Australia. So guys, it's quite a long one for me. I don't usually do them this long. I just want to say I sincerely appreciate all those people who have either tried to email me, message me and contact me during this difficult time. We are coping really well. Out of the three of us, I'm, I probably went through the flood really well but crashed after it and it's taken me time to pick up. Um, Thing is currently resting. He had a checkup with the doctor yesterday and the doctor in his wisdom decided he was due for another COVID booster. And he told me, because it is quite early, he was up quite early, he's not feeling great. All his muscles ache, which is the COVID booster. So he, I think he'll be having a restful day. Reeves is on a re week off from work and has been helping greatly. He's been around a lot. Um, he cooked last night because I really didn't feel like it. And yes, even though we on Boxing Day we lost power for 13 hours, it was extremely hot. We packed up all our devices and went to my office, which wasn't affected by the flood, and sat in the air conditioning and recharged all our devices. And yeah, and that's mainly because people got overexcited on Boxing Day and crashed our little generator that's doing 130 houses, which we've been asked to, you know, try and be more conservative with our energy. Hence, I'm doing the video in the morning. And yes, we try and um, compensate for the heat. I think the day we went to the office, it was like 35 degrees and 92% humidity. And in the heat of the day, it was just too much. So yeah, my bosses won't mind. I actually did some work while I was in there. Anyway, guys, until next time, stay safe, stay well. If you don't, 
hear from me before the new year. I hope you had a great Christmas and are looking forward to a new year 2024. Surely there will be some prosperous opportunities and some challenges for all those crafters out there. Bye for now. Thank you.